Once again, as in the five decades of South Africa's struggle against white domination, the African people are waiting expectantly and eagerly for the emergence of a bold and courageous program from the PAC, an organization that has roots among the masses and whose leadership comes from among them. Not only has the PAC succeeded in raising the eyes of our people above the dust of immediate conflict, to the genuine democracy that lies beyond the stormy sea of struggle, but it has also imparted a meaning and a purpose of their struggle. The South African people, therefore, are awake. They are waiting eagerly and expectantly, waiting for the call, the call to battle, to battle for the conquest of the continent of Africa which for over 300 years has been the prostitute of the philanderers and rakes of Western capitalism. Mabu Yei Africa, that is the cry ringing throughout the continent. Africa for Africans. Isweletu, I Africa. Those are the words that spell the doom of white supremacy in Africa. Who are the Africanists? The Africanists in Azania recognize themselves as part of one African nation, stretching from Cape to Cairo, Madagascar to Morocco, and pledge themselves to strive and work ceaselessly to find organizational expression for this nation in a merger of all African states, a United States of Africa, which will serve as an effective defense against the forces of imperialism, colonialism, economic heron volkism and settler nationalism, and as a sure and lasting foundation for an Africanist socialist democracy. The African people regard the development of such a nation as essential for the preservation of their sovereignty, of their vital material and spiritual interests and for the creation of conditions under which they will be enabled to make their lasting contribution to human advancement in a free Africa. The Africanists concur that the social force which upholds the material, intellectual and spiritual interest of the oppressed people in Azania is African nationalism, and the social force which upholds the material, intellectual and spiritual interests of the oppressor is settler nationalism, which predicates itself on the annihilation of the African oppressed people through a system of premediated systematic economic exclusion and landlessness. On sellouts, the white settler class and the African landless oppressed. These leaders consider South Africa and its wealth to belong to all who live in it, the alien dispossessors and the indigenous dispossessed, the alien robbers and their indigenous victims. They regard as equal the foreign master and his indigenous slave, the white exploiter and the African exploited, the foreign oppressor and the indigenous oppressed. They regard as brothers the subject Africans and their European overloads. They are too incredibly naive and too fantastically unrealistic to see that the interests of the subject, African, people who are criminally oppressed, ruthlessly exploited and inhumanly degraded, are in sharp conflict and in pointed contradiction with those of the white ruling class. When the white man wants a dirty job done, he always gets a black man to do it. The so-called leaders after doing a dirty job namely, seeing to it that the African is deprived for all time of this inherent right to control his country effectively, of seeing to it that whatever new social order is established in this country, the essentials of white domination are retained, even though its frills and trappings may be ripped off. This attitude has been labeled multiracialism by their white masters. They have been boldly suggested that being multiracialist is a virtue. Africanism, the way forward. Africanism is pan-Africanist in scope, purpose and direction. It is a social force that constitutes the third social force in the world. It serves the material, intellectual and spiritual interests of Africa and does not in any way serve the spiritual interests of either the Eastern or Western powers. It is continental in scope, covering the entire continent, from Cape to Cairo and from Madagascar to Morocco. It is a social force functioning through the media of African social conditions, and operating to liberate Africa and to create a social order original in conception, Africanistic in orientation, socialistic in content, democratic in form and creative in purpose. Pan-Africanism became a concrete reality when African nationalists met at Accra. The All Africa People's Conference, held in Accra in December 1958, laid a promising organizational foundation for African nationalism on a pan-African basis. Final Triumph 
In its dialectical march towards the final synthesis of Africanism, African nationalism is destined to create the conditions favorable for the development of the African personality. The final triumph of the liberation movement under the direction of the PAC is assured. The movement must triumph because in the march to freedom, the African people have history on their side. The militant progressive forces of African nationalism are bound to crush the reactionary forces of white domination. The movement must triumph because the PAC alone has a message for the oppressed, but their salvation lies in the manifest determination to unite as a nation and to struggle for the noble ends of freedom and self-determination. The movement must triumph because, having been purified in the crucible of oppression, the African people can demonstrate to the world, genuine democracy in action, a democracy founded upon the ruins of the material and spiritual conflicts and contradictions of the existing social order, a democracy in which man shall at long last find their true self, and a democracy in which the human personality shall blossom to the full.